We are getting ready to go on a Grey Line tour of the Niagara Falls. We're going to do Made of the Mist again, Cave of the Winds, and um, they're going to take us to see the falls and just different things. So we'll look forward. Saber, okay, highly recommended as a as a uh, as a dinner or lunch stop. And you you know you get such beautiful gourmet food at nice prices. And they also have a Barnes and Noble there, a coffee shop. I think they have a deli, they have a bakery, a patisserie, they call it, you know, French style. And they may have the wine tasting in there as well. So that is a hidden gem at the end of the uh, building. Okay, welcome everybody. Get our last group on board and off we go to the boat ride. up that we have 19 people I know that we are ready to go and uh, let me just start off by saying my name is Debbie Deb I'm your driver and guide for today it is my pleasure to have you on board uh, can everybody do me a little favor can you silence your cell phones please put your cell phone on to silent he hears I also still continue to teach a little bit. I teach uh, part-time Spanish at community college. So if you want anything uh, translated today, just let me know, okay? Now, another little courtesy announcement, everybody. Listen, please. Give me just 30 seconds of your time. Can I have everybody on the bus listening? When I'm doing the tour, I totally get that you want to comment to who you came with. You know what I mean? You want to talk about stuff that you're saying? I get it. I would, too. While I'm doing the tour or giving an instruction, um, a huge courtesy to others around you, if you could please talk in a quiet or a whisper voice so that those in front of you, beside you, behind you can hear the instructions or the tour, that's appreciated. You know why? You never know. They might be going on Jeopardy. They might need all this information because they get the Niagara Falls category. You know, you want them to go get all, all they can out of that Jeopardy experience. So thank Thanks. That is very appreciated by everybody on board. Yes, 15 years I've been doing these tours uh, and teaching for part of my lifetime as well, but this is my favorite work I have ever done. Here's one reason why. Raise your hand if you're on vacation. Me too. I go on vacation all the time with people who are usually in a really good mood who want to have fun. How's that for work? It's a great job to have, but I want you to know I also take this job very seriously because you're here to make a memory of a lifetime, and it's my job to make sure that that happens for you today. So later in the tour, I'm going to take a group picture of the Happy Debbie's Daredevils for the day. Just a second. I'm going to take a group picture of everybody, and um, if you give me your email, I am not going to sell your email. I am not going to give it to the highest bidder. I will just use it to send you a personalized thank you. And I'm going to send you that thank you after the tour today with the group picture and a link to TripAdvisor because my goal is that you get five, if not ten, stars out of this tour today. So I thank you so much for being on board. And uh, here we are at the boat, so what I would like everybody to do is the following. Lighten your load. Don't take a backpack, purse, this, that, the other if you don't need it. Uh, for one thing, uh, you know, it might uh, keep you from having free hands to take your pictures. Do take your camera. And for the other thing, um, it's not a stop for shopping, for eating, anything like that. It's, it's going to the boat. And the last thing is, whatever you take, it has to be covered by your poncho. Okay, so uh, please lighten your load and uh, really just best to, to take you and your camera. And once we get to the boat, you will be getting a nice big blue poncho that keeps you pretty dry. And when we get back on board after the boat ride, I will introduce you to everybody else on board, let you know who you're traveling with today, who your fellow bus mates are today. Okay, so we're going to exit and just head to the back of the bus here. Just, I'm going to have you just wait. Okay, we'll do that last. All right. 
we'll all start walking. I'll tell you a couple things as we travel along. Uh, first thing I want you to realize is everything on the other side of the river is Canada. The border between our countries is right in the middle of the river. It is still quiet. So our border, our land crossing border is not open yet with our Canadian neighbors. We have fingers crossed something might be happening mid-August. For the first time since last March 21st because of the pandemic, right? So last year is totally different than this year for sure. Um, you'll notice it's still kind of quiet. And I'll be pointing out uh, different landmarks that you see over on the Canadian side throughout the tour. Once we get up here at the ticket window, I ask that everybody uh, form a line and go through the ticket window. You're going to be uh, grabbing your own uh, ticket. I have the voucher. Uh, but you need to be handed your own individual ticket. So put it in your hand and don't lose it from the ticket window to down by the boat. Do people lose them sometimes? Yes. Don't let it be you. <laughs> Where did your ticket go? Okay. Uh, once we get up on that bridge, I know you want to take pictures. I would too. Well, I ask you to follow me to the boat ride. And after the boat ride, we'll be back up on that bridge for lots of picture taking. Okay? Right now, we're going to see the window. We're going to try to get you on that side of the boat. We're on the observation tower on our Gray Line tour, taking pictures and video over there. It's all Canada. That bridge. You look through all the photos. That's where you cross the border. The border was open. Yes. cranes where they take the boats out of the water for the winter. As I told you. But when you get on the boat, put the poncho on. <laughs> that said, don't forget to put the poncho on. Uh, get the hood up and tied under your chin or the water goes right down. How are you And your shirt will be drenched. If you don't mind your shirt being drenched, then don't do it, but I'm just warning you. 
If you have long sleeves, if you don't want to get your sleeves soaked, you can push them up a little bit of plastic underneath. Okay? Um, and then enjoy the boat ride. Now, we're not going to be in a rush getting us all back together again. You're going to take your time going up the ramp. When you get off the boat... that you said Nikola Tesla, Nikola Tesla Westinghouse worked in. Make sure we're clean with as well. Clean windshield wiper. You get soaked in the horseshoe falls on the top level. So, so you got wet in the horseshoe falls. Huh? It's like a hurricane down there in the Horseshoe Falls. That's what it felt like. A hurricane. This is from the observation that coming off of the Maid of the Mist. From Louisiana, Stephanie Ivy and Weston raise your hands. Welcome from Louisiana, enjoying their family travels. Welcome. Happy to have everybody on board. Look to the right, everybody, and you see the upper rapids of the American Falls. Those are class six rapids, but don't try your kayaking skills there. The waterfalls are the other side of the pedestrian bridge. It would be your last kayaking trip. That's right. And here we are. Welcome to Goat Island. And look around, and I hope that nobody is disappointed. Not one goat. Where are the goats? Are you looking for the goats? There aren't any goats. There used to be goats in the 1700s. John Steadman was the owner of this island. He bought it from the Native Americans. He had lots of animals. And he would bring the animals over here on the island in the wintertime to keep them safe from the wolves. Well, there was a difficult, harsh winter. It was very cold. He lost a lot of his animals. They didn't survive. But he had a big, strong billy goat that survived, and he names the island Goat Island after his goat. And the name stuck. It has been Goat Island ever since. There's the pedestrian bridge you were looking at. How do you get on and off of the mainland walking? Goat Island is the third 
largest of the 21 islands in the Niagara River, has the distinct honor of separating the waterfalls between the American Falls and the Bridal Veil Falls on this northern end of Goat Island, I should say the northwestern end, and the Canadian, otherwise known as Horseshoe Falls, on the southwestern end. And this is part of the Niagara Falls State Park, which is the oldest state park in our country. So what we are going to do now, this is some viewing. You have just seen the Horseshoe Falls from down below. And now the first view you're going to have is of the Horseshoe Falls from up above. So I'm going to take you there, and then you're going to just walk along the railing and go to the view on this end, which is the American and Bridalville Falls. Now on this end of the island is where you can walk down the steps and you can go to Luna Island. So we're going to scoot past here. And uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to drop you off on this end to just uh, lighten the load as far as your walk goes. And I'm going to park the bus, go get the tickets for your attraction later, and then I'm going to meet you along the walkway here. Uh, back over your right shoulder is a yellow building, the bathroom. So I'm going to meet you right around here in the area of the bathrooms and right along the uh, railing there. Okay, I'll meet you in the, on the walk. And um, if anybody needs to use it, where the trolley is, you will see the steps that go down. And boy, take that, take that walk down the steps and go down to what is known as Terrapin Point. Terrapin is tortoise or uh, turtle. So it's like the back, the shape of a turtle. That is the most beautiful view of the Horseshoe Falls from either side. And I've done many, many tours on the Canadian side. So enjoy that view. And I have right now um, I have 10 till 12. So I would say uh, by about 10 after 12, 20 minutes, be headed back up and start your walk along the railing and I'm going to meet you, intercept you along the path on the railing. I want you to know something. In 2012, this was a special spot. Did you hear of a tightrope walker by the name of Nick Walenda? This is where he did his stunt. So when you're down there, think about the tightrope wire that went from Terrapin Point where you're going to be standing right across to the brown building in Canada. It's known as Table Rock. It's a visitor center. They have the attraction journey behind the fall over in Canada. He walked across that tightrope wire 2012, June 15th, and when he got to the other side, the customs and immigration officer was there because he crossed the border, and she asked him for his passport. He had to present his passport, and then she asked him, what's the purpose of your trip? And he said, to inspire millions. That's one thing. Another thing you're going to see over on the Canadian side, two old buildings up above the waterfalls. Those are old hydroelectric plants. They are no longer functional. They're used for nothing. And you'll say, what a waste. That could be a restaurant, a museum, a condo, something there. And you'll see the old hydro plant down in the gorge. That was a Tesla Westinghouse hydro plant on the Canadian side, early 1900s. So I'll start you off on your walk here. About 10 after 12, you should be headed down along that railing. This is Terrapin Point, where you view the Horseshoe Falls, Canadian Horseshoe Falls, as they said 90% of it is on Canada's land.
See that one that's hidden by by the fog. So you think about it, Jimbo. That guy, tight rope, foot of rope, from on this railing all the way to that brown building. He walked across the border on the rope. He walked all the way across. That's what that lady was saying. And then when he got to the other side, border, border patrol was there waiting for him, saying, give me your passport to cross the border. He couldn't get Wasn't that view amazing? I was saying, I have to like go fishing to draw people away from me. <laughs> you just stay there a half hour, just mesmerized. So later on, this is where we'll end up going. Um, I'll send you on your way to enjoy the Cave of the Winds attraction. Right down on these elevators. Take a look at that stonework. That stone is excavated from the gorge. The stonework around this old building, look at that, dates to the 1920s. And to dig out those elevators that are there, they dug from the top down, pulled the stone up, and then made the building. I know, a lot of work, right? Think of all the ladies who went into that building. You can see they have the souvenir pictures here. So before you go on the attraction, if you want to stand in front of the green screen, they'll make you look like a daredevil, but you don't have to do a thing. <laughs> look back this way. Let's pause for a moment. And look at that beautiful arch. That arch is a reconstructed piece from the very original hydroelectric plant. 1895 that Tesla and Westinghouse had. And your, the hydro plant is actually down the road, uh, but that is where the bus will be, on the other side of the arch at 1230. But a beautiful piece of construction, or reconstruction, I should say. Did you see that review from Larry S? No. Did you, oh, did, that was cute. I, oh, what, you didn't give me one star? No, I didn't know it. Somebody said. Ah. I thought it was great. 
So you have the view from opposite where you started. Opposite the bridge, you're looking out at the American Falls, the Bridal Hill Falls, the statue of Nicholas Tesla over here, given to us by Jesus Wagner in 1976, a big bronze sculpture. That's fun to get up there, take some pictures. And if you look straight ahead, you'll see Luna Island. Come on over. Anybody wants family pictures, I'll take them. So you have the chance if you would like to take the... The Nikola Tesla statue. of the winds, but there is no cave. No, there is wind. What were you thinking? There's no cave. What? There used to be a cave. So I'm talking back in the 1800s, the rock jutted out farther above, right? So the water shot out over that rock. It created a cave behind the waterfalls. However, that water is very powerful. Um, going over uh, the waterfalls where you are going to be, the American and Bridal Bill Falls, 60,000 gallons per second. Over the Horseshoe Falls, 675,000 gallons per second. And it erodes all the rock underneath. So it eroded that rock ledge back and the water is now more flush with that rock edge. So no ability to go behind the waterfalls, but man, you will be up close and personal. That is why they give you the sandals after you see the movie. You go into the sandal room, they'll give you sandals. And don't you worry, I have bags. I have my recycle bags. And I'll give every family a little bag. You put your shoes in there and I'll take them back to the bus for you. So you don't have to worry about your shoes. You get VIP shoe service today. Now can I tell you, I no longer use those bags for my groceries. <laughs> I, I don't need to say more, right? No. So, uh, yeah, do please give me the bag afterwards. After you get on the bus, grab your shoes. Uh, I'll take those from you. So the, the tour is going to be extended a little bit, all right? Um, we'll be getting back on the bus closer to 3 o'clock, and then I'll get you right back to your pickup spots. So I get a question about this time, where does all of this water come from that never ends? Well, the water originates in Lake Superior, more or less in the center of our country that we share with Canada. And then some of the water flows into Lake Michigan. Other water flows into Lake Huron. From Lake Huron, the water flows into Lake Erie, which is on the bottom of my map, which is south of us. Okay, south is this way, east over here. And northward through, the 38 miles of the Niagara River to Lake Ontario, eastward out the St. Lawrence River to the Atlantic Ocean. Now this huge system of fresh water, the only place that there is salt water is the very eastern edge of the St. Lawrence River that is affected by the tides of the Atlantic Ocean. Um, so the huge system of fresh water makes up 20% of the world's fresh water. You heard that right, 20% of the entire world world's fresh water, one of the reasons we need to stay such good friends with our Canadian neighbors, 
We cannot divide this water. We have to share. Now, for those of you who went with me earlier on the tour as we drove by here, this is a nice restaurant right here and a pretty boutique hotel dating to 1823. This is called the Red Coach Inn. A very nice spot to have a meal. Kind of like, you know, a finer dining, nicer dining experience there. It is named the Red Coach Inn because when General Lafayette arrived here in 1823, he was in a carriage, a coach, with a red roof. And so named, they named it the Red Coach Inn after General Lafayette's coach, his carriage. Back in the day, right? They weren't talking about Tesla or Tesla cars or lights uh, being lit up 20 miles away and that all happened after that, 1895. So, if anybody needs to hop back into the store to get anything, you're welcome to. Uh, those uh, wanting to get your food, you're going to make a beeline for the food truck. Give them your last name. They'll have your order ready. You can pick up any drinks that you might now want to have at the food truck, okay? And if anybody needs to use the restrooms, right in the gray building, the visitor center, right on the other side of the food truck are the restrooms. I'm actually going there to pick up a couple brochures for some spots. They have a bunch of years ago. The waterfalls were located seven miles north when the glaciers receded. And it took that amount of time for them to erode south, recede, and arrive to where they are now. So in their path, they created a 200-foot high up to 320-foot high gorge. Right here, you'll see Zyka, the best Indian, Indian cuisine in the area. Art Alley, some local artists painted those murals. Over here to the left, a very specific mural of Nikola Tesla, right on the side of the Power City Deli. And up here to the left, if you're looking for a great pizza, Donatello's is your stop. They do a really nice uh, New York style goopy cheesy pizza. Here to the left is the Kraft. So if you are looking for a burger and a craft beer, that would be a spot for you. If wine is your preference, come right across the street over here to Wine on 3rd. Now they feature some of the local wines of the area. This is a grape producing region. So of course there are wineries. I actually have a brochure on the wine trail which is up here in the northeastern area. So where you find rivers, where you find large bodies of water, lakes, grapes like to grow there uh, because the air is modified, it's temperate uh, because of the water. So good grape growing area. So back to the Niagara Gorge. Here's what happened. 12,500 years ago, the glaciers receded. We were left with a glacier plate the height of Lake Erie, a lower glacier plate the height of Lake Ontario, and those glacier plates meet at a place called the Escarpment, above the northern, north of the northernmost bridge. The Escarpment is a sheer cliff, 320 feet in height. It runs for hundreds of miles. You can actually see this delineation from outer space. It is that distinct. And um, the waterfalls themselves, 170, 180 feet. So you can see the difference in where the waterfalls used to be and where they are now. Right here to the left, we are passing the Niagara Falls Aquarium. So notice it's pretty small. Set your expectations appropriately if you go to visit. This is not Atlantis Paradise Island. This is the little Niagara Falls Aquarium. Sammy the Seal is back out doing his shows. He was on vacation all during the pandemic. So you can enjoy some time in the Niagara Falls Aquarium there. So getting back to these waterfalls receding. Most of that 12,500 years while the waterfalls were receding, the rate of that erosion was three feet every year. Imagine that. The waterfalls were on this side of the bus one year, middle of the bus the next year, other end of the bus the next year. But something happened in 1950 that changed all of that. The Canadians decided that rather than the two little hydro plants right here by the waterfalls, they were cranking out enough power, they were using that 180 foot drop of the water, they decided, you know what, we need a bigger hydro plant. We're going to build a hydro plant 
up here in the north at the highest height of the gorge wall. And this hydro plant is going to be huge. And they did. But there was a problem. How are you getting that water up there to send it over the, the edge, right? Because they were using the natural waterfalls in the south. Well, what they decided to do was to build water intakes. You'll see two towers along the water's edge with big tunnels under them, pulling out water from the Niagara River before it goes over the waterfalls, tunneling it seven miles north. It's stored in a huge reservoir used by the hydro plants. Now, we thought that was such a good idea. We did the same thing starting in 1963. If you drive in along the Niagara Scenic Parkway, you'll see the towers, tunnels, reservoir, hydro plant. And when we established those two systems, the rate of erosion dropped from three feet every year down to about an inch every year. And guess who's happy about that? The hotels. Yeah, they get to keep their views right here for a while until the waterfalls arrive in Buffalo, which is kind of bizarre to think about. They'll be about this tall. And listen, if you come back for your tour then, I'll be retired, okay? You'll have to have another tour guide. So kind of interesting what's happening behind the scenes. And realize something, the water you're seeing going over the waterfalls all through the day is only one half of the flow of the river. It's only 50% of the potential of the river. Because we're scooping 25% uh, out both of our countries before it goes over. Take a look at this railroad trellis right here. It has an important uh, role in history. I'm going to put some puzzle pieces together for you in a moment. And look at the little Whirlpool Bridge right here. It is located where the original suspension bridge was. This is where our countries are the closest together. Look how close we are to Canada right there. In order to use that bridge, everybody in the vehicle has to have a special card, a Nexus card. Look over here to the left and you'll see where you have to go for an interview to get that card. Guess who has a Nexus card? Guess who can't cross the border along with anybody else, All right? But great way to cross over when the other bridge is back up. So let me put those puzzle pieces together for you. Have a look over here. Welcome to the Niagara Falls Underground Railroad Heritage Center. This building is the original customs house of the early 1800s to travel over to Canada. Look at that stonework, that hand stonework. And here's the history that we need to remember. In the mid-1800s, slaves were escaping from the south, making their way north, hidden in homes, in the hollow walls of restaurants, hidden in churches, like the church by the casino, made their way here. And in the still of the night, they went over that railroad trellis to escape to freedom in Canada. And the leader of that operation is depicted right here in this lovely mural, Harriet Tubman, otherwise known as Grandma Moses. This is our Black Lives Matter mural wall. Black Lives Matter is down to the far right. There is a lovely portrayal of Maya Angelou and a recent edition of John Lewis. So we're very proud to have this uh, Heritage Center, Underground Railroad Heritage Center here, open every day except today. It is closed on Mondays. And look over there, you'll see the Amtrak train station. When the border opens for ground travel, a great way to get to Toronto, park your car right here and take the train. You will eliminate a, a lot of traffic. If you look up on my poster, on my, oh, here, you'll see uh, Toronto is under the letter N. So to get there, you have to go around the western edge of Lake Ontario. And taking the train really speeds you up. Look over here to the left and you'll see an interesting building over there on the Canadian side. That is the house of 10,000 Buddhas. I bet you can't guess what's in there. You'd be right, yes. Buddhas, how many? Yes, you're right again. You're very smart. The house of 10,000 Buddhas. Uh, there are several of those institutions scattered around the world and one of them is right over there. And that's my next question. What is the name of the city over there? Well, 
that city is Niagara Falls, province of Ontario, Canada, and here, of course, Niagara Falls, New York, USA. So if you are staying in the Sheraton, Niagara Falls, understand that if you intend to stay on the U.S. side, your GPS might have you traveling over the bridge, if you're not specific enough, and make sure you tell your family which country you're in. You could be in the lobby of the Sheraton, Niagara Falls, saying, well, I'm right in the lobby. And they're saying, I'm right in the lobby. But you're in different countries. That's right. It's a common problem at Customs and Immigration for people to get partway across the bridge before they realize they didn't really want to be there. And maybe or maybe not, they might not have a passport. Looking over there, you'll see the red, uh, red orangish roof sticking up. That is the Great Wolf Lodge, located over here in the area of the Whirlpool. On the Canadian side, that's a chain with a water park associated. So before we head down to see the Whirlpool, have a look up here, and you'll see what's happening in this section of the river. This is where the river makes a sharp 90 degree bend. So the water rushes too far past the eastern channel, gets trapped in the basin, is pushed counterclockwise, and then runs into the water going north. So the only thing left for the water to do that wants to go east is to go under itself to continue east. Now this is why you have the whirlpool. And keep in mind, it's not one huge whirlpool. It's a series of counterclockwise eddies. You're going to see lots of whirls and swirls on the surface of the water. Now if anything, anyone comes to this area of the river, down the river, they, it, will get pulled down under the water surface. How far? Up to 120 feet, 12 stories deep. This is the second deepest water in the river. The first deepest water, right under your boat. Yes, I tell you that now. 180 feet, that's right, 18 stories. Now, there are three other things that I want to point out before you get off the bus. You are going to see an attraction here located on the Canadian side, the Whirlpool Aero Car. It's a cable car. It goes across the basin, Canada to Canada, 200 feet above the water, invented in 1916 by an engineer from Spain. So to this day, it continues to be yellow and red like the Spanish flag. So you might see it going out five minutes and then back the other direction. You might see people down below, and you wonder, how did they get down there? Well, back over here, we just passed the Whirlpool Bridge, right beside the bridge are steps. 300 steps that feel like a thousand coming back up. And up around the bend this way, another staircase that both have trails that can come down to the Whirlpool. And you might see some people kind of in the periphery of the water on the Canadian side fishing. Fishing is a big industry around here. Bass, perch, trout, freshwater salmon. And finally, you might see the jet boat. Yep. And if you're interested in the jet boats, I have information on those. You get them either from Lewiston or Youngstown. They come past the hydro plants through the river heading south. They dance around the area of the Whirlpool and back north they go. So we'll see what action we see today. Now, uh, you don't need to take anything with you, just your cameras. You don't need ponchos here. This is not a... Whirlpool State Park. Okay, I got everybody with me here. Let's head on down this way. Uh, this way's a little shadier, so we're going to go down and yeah, back up on this way. That gets a little warm on to be like this. I wasn't expecting nothing. I wasn't expecting stuff. I thought it was just a ramp all the way down. Stay. 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 Stay.
flips up too. Oops, that was down. You going? I don't know. What they call this oh, whirlpool? Yeah. What? Heat <laughs> water. That's not purified. It's bad. That's how much. I'll go up along this path, and you'll see where the water goes. I've had people ask me, "Is this the one thing here?" We have a little breeze. 
today, so that'll help us as we take this walk. There's usually a breeze out of this area. is resting for the day. The arrow car doesn't look like it's doing its thing today. Ludzie płacili ciężkie pieniądze na ten tak, że przedostaną się przejść pod wodę i są po amerykańskim zgodnie. See where the river is now going east. Okay, so the water goes around under itself and then east. So as you hug the railing there, you can see now how the water is going to be. Condition bus. <clears throat> Town called Lewiston. Is anybody going to be here for a couple more days? Um, Lewiston is a suggestion for a town to visit. It is located, as I said, we are right here. So you just go a little farther up uh, the road here, a couple miles, just only a couple miles, and you would come to the upper level of Lewiston, and that is where the hydroelectric plant is located. If you go down the escarpment to the lower level of Lewiston, that's where their very quaint, charming downtown is located. A beautiful, lovely main street with shops and restaurants there. Some nice restaurants. There's a restaurant right along the water, um, and that is one of the spots where you could get the jet boat. So that is a suggestion they have one of the best Italian restaurants in the area called Casa Antica, right? Like old antique house, Casa Antica. And an excellent uh, Italian food there. And if the Hydro Plant uh, Visitor Center is open, that is a marvelous spot to visit. Sort of a hands-on museum type of deal. You can pedal a bike and make electricity happen. And there's a wonderful view. Um, you can almost see the Lake Ontario from the north. And again, that is just up around the bend here. So we're heading back now to your final attraction, the Cave of the Winds with no cape. In a couple minutes, I'll be back on the microphone with you. I'll tell you a few uh, daredevil stories before we arrive to that, that attraction. Now, when I talk about daredevils right at this point, I'm talking about the ones that went over in barrels. But understand the very first daredevils were the tightrope walkers, and that's dating to the very early, early 1800 time frame. And then daredevils that attempted to go through the whirlpool when it was at 100% force. Some successfully, some not. So I'm going to move up to 1901. The very first daredevil to go over the waterfalls in a barrel. Was it a man, woman, boy, girl? What do you think? A woman. Yes, it was a woman. Good for you. It was a 63-year-old retired widowed school teacher. Crazy, right? Her name was Annie Edson Taylor. She went over dressed up in her finery. She survived. She took her cat with her. And her cat survived. Although they did say the cat was black when it went in and white when it came out. It was so scared to death. She was the first. 
past. Ten years later, the first man went over, Bobby Leach. He survived. He took a show on the road. And do you know when he was traveling, he slipped on an orange peel, ended up in the hospital, and died of complications of gangrene. I kid you not, back to stranger than fiction. Altogether, how many went over the waterfalls? From 1901 to 1995, in various types of contraptions, 14 people. Now, that is not counting number 15 or 16, because they went over twice, and they survived twice. They're only counted once as a daredevil. And of those 14 that went over, how many survived? That would be nine. And the other five, they just weren't so lucky. What can I say? How do you think the stunt worked out with the one that went over in a kayak? That's not recommended by your tour guide. How about the one that went over in a jet ski? That's not recommended. Now, that was in 1995. That was one of the last to go over. He had a parachute on his back. And his idea was launch over the brink of the falls. Parachute would lower him to the water. Sounds like a great idea, and it is. When the parachute functions, which it did not, he was one of the five unlucky ones. Now, rumor has it his wife packed the parachute. I don't know if that's true, but watch out, guys, if your wife's doing your packing. Now, is anybody back there thinking of going over the waterfalls in a barrel? I'm looking for a little show of hands. Not today, all right? Well, if you change your mind, here's your advice from your tour guide. Save up some money. It's illegal. Big, hefty fines both sides of the border and some jail time, but you know what? If it doesn't work out so well, you don't have to pay. <laughs> now, that's not good news. Did you figure that out? If you don't like the idea, by the way, of those 300 steps, look over here. You can go into that brick building through those gray doors, and there's an elevator. Take the elevator down below. And that is the spot where they dock the Maid of the Mist boats that I was showing you when we were up on the bridge. And it's also a trailhead, so you can start a little trail walk there. It is also a location of ruins. And the ruins that you would see there are of the Sholkoff hydroelectric plant. That was one of four hydro plants located by the waterfalls, and that's back, we're talking late 1800s, early 1900s, into uh, the early 2000s, okay? That's when these hydro plants were functioning. Sholkoff Hydro Plant, 1956. It was a regular day. People went to work, and everything was fine until they noticed the shimmying, the shaking, the water coming through the walls, and they started to scramble, and almost everybody got out alive. One man lost his life when two-thirds of the hydro plant slid into the river. Yep, it was an engineering disaster. And uh, that was in 1956, seven years later, the big hydro plant of ours was opened up in the north. So if you took, go down that elevator, there are lots of posters uh, that have to do with that history. I found it quite fascinating. I did that last year, and I thought it was just terrific. It doesn't cost a thing. A little side trip you can take up during your visit here. Now, if you look on this road, this is Niagara Street, and you see where you would get onto the Rainbow Bridge. In a busy summer holiday, the traffic is backed up to the casino. Look over here to the left where the casino is. All of this is traffic funneling to get on the bridge. And of course, you know, with it being closed, no, no problem. <laughs> no traffic. But boy, it really does get backed up on these bridges in a regular holiday, or a regular, specifically a holiday weekend. So as we come up here, I'm going to cross over Old Falls Street, and there, this is the street that has several restaurants. If you look over here to the left, you're going to see some lights, and that is where you would find Rainforest Cafe at the bottom of the Sheraton. There are nice restaurants in the casino as well, to the far end, Saber Restaurant, and then Fast Foods rest Restaurants down to the far right. Take a look at this building, the Giacomo Hotel. I have brochures on this, if you're interested, right here. 
here. Very interesting architecturally. Hotels on the bottom, residences on the top. You can go into the lobby. They have a lounge. Get your favorite beverage. Go the whole way up top and see the lights lit up at night from the top. That's a little known secret, okay? A fun, nice thing to do. Take a look at the pink hotel. It has a history that has to do with a beautiful blonde initials M. M. Anybody want to take a guess? No, it's Minnie Mouse with a wig. No, it was Marilyn Monroe. You're right. Now, 1950, she made a movie here. What was the movie called? I'll give you a clue. Blank Falls. Niagara. Niagara. Yes, the movie was Niagara. Now, most of the movie was filmed over on the Canadian side because that has a better backdrop of the falls. So she was staying on the Canadian side with her husband, Joseph Cotton, who was staying in the Pink Hotel. No, it wasn't John F. Kennedy. No, it was Joe DiMaggio. Yes, he was keeping an eye on Marilyn across the way. That's right. Where Marilyn was, Joe wasn't far behind. Now, as you come up over the bridge, I want you to look over here to the left. You've seen the rapids here to the right. Look to the left and look where the white line of water is, where the white water starts. That is known as the point of no return. Now, I guess that speaks for itself, but it has an interesting history right there. <coughs> 1969, they dammed up the water there. They dewatered the American Falls. They diverted all the water around the other side of Goat Island over the Canadian Falls. They did that for a specific reason. The reason was they were researching the big pile of rock at the bottom of the American Falls caused by erosion. <laughs> So they were researching the big pile of rock. Did you see it when you were on the boat? A big, huge pile of rock at the bottom of this 10% uh, of the water, the American and Bridalville Falls. They were trying to see if they could remove it to give the full height and beauty back to the waterfalls. What they discovered was that underneath, the rock is actually softer. That if, if they remove that outer layer of rock, it would be worse for erosion. So they're letting nature take its course. So get your pictures now, everybody. In another hundred years, all we're going to have left over here will be the American Rapids. The American Falls are slowly disappearing. Now we have a couple of minutes for me to show you the rest of Goat Island before I drop you off at your attraction, and that will be the grand finale. So uh, let me show you what would be the eastern end of Goat Island in case you want to come back and have a walk out here. We're going to go and have a look at Three Sisters Islands. This is a real pretty part of the island. I always offer this as a suggestion to people uh, that if you're here tomorrow morning, get your coffee, get your favorite breakfast sandwich, come on over to Goat Island. You can park here for free. And you can walk out onto these three islands. Now they are connected by footbridges. And it is really, really beautiful. This is a spot where limos pull up on Saturdays and the bridal party gets out for pictures. It's a spot where locals will bring a picnic and a book and spend part of a day. It's a spot where artists will come to paint. It is that beautiful. And the islands are actually named for the three daughters of a wealthy Buffalo hotel owner. Back in the early 1800s, there were no footbridges. And his three daughters, on a difficult, harsh winter, walked across ice bridges, across each bridge, out to the end uh, by the river. And he was so proud of them, he asked the owner of the island, the Porter Brothers, will you name the islands after my daughters? That's what happens when you have money and know the right people. So he had the islands named for his daughters. And this is the spot, just beautiful. Highly suggest if you get a chance to come on over here, park right here for free, and just have a stroll out and enjoy Three Sisters Islands. I am going to show you the view that you have when you get out to the last island. Here it is. The 90% spans of the river, the waters that are forming the Canadian Horseshoe Falls. 
And as you come up over here, you'll see an interesting structure out in the water. The International Water Control Divide goes as far out as our border with Canada. Underneath each of the gate is a, of the arches is a gate that can be pulled up to manipulate the water. Now, one of the purposes of that, if you look, keep looking to the right, you'll see the two towers. See the two towers popping up on the other side? That's where the water intakes are, where the tunnels begin. And the water is tunneled north. Okay, and another purpose of that structure is to push water around the northern side of Goat Island to keep the American and Bridal Veil Falls flowing. If that structure weren't there, it's possible that this little part of the river would dry up, fall, the river would just go to the other side, and there would be no American Falls or Bridal Veil Falls. But you know what? We already have our postcards printed. We want it to look real nice for everyone. We push water over there. That's right. So this is the whole stance of Goat Island, the third largest of the 21 islands in the Niagara River. Now, in other circumstances, I may have passed the Crisco back. I might have asked you to come out here just to help me out a little bit, but I think we're good. We are. They're taking their side of the, out of the middle, as they say. Okay, are you ready for your grand finale? Yeah. The Cave of the Winds. When I drop you off, I want to make sure that everybody takes your poncho with you. But do not put that poncho on until you get up close to the waterfalls. Okay, you have a movie to see, you have sandals to put on, you have an elevator to take down, you have a tunnel to walk through, the ramp uh, to walk down, and then you'll see the waterfalls. Then you'll put your poncho on, okay? It is hot and sticky under that plastic. So here's how this attraction works. I'll drop you off over by the clock as you exit the bus, and all you need to do is take your poncho and your camera, okay? I have the bags for your shoes. It's not a stop for buying anything, um, you know, because you're going to the attraction and right back to the bus. So I'll hand you your ticket. You head right over to the clock. And you're listening to see if they have called 152. When you hear 152 is now entering, you go ahead and walk by the ticket taker. Hold out your ticket. They'll scan it. And then keep your ticket. It's yours to keep. Put it in your pocket. You don't need it after that. But you can use it for a bookmark, right? There you go. Souvenir. Okay. So you go through the ticket taker there, and that's where the green screen will be. If you want to get the souvenir picture, stand in front of the green screen. They'll take your picture. One real nice, you know, one like you're in a barrel going over. But I want to warn you, 50 bucks for two pictures, okay? Just so you know. And if you don't want the picture experience, say no thank you and walk right through. All right. So I give you your ticket. So far you've gone through the ticket taker. You pass by the green screen. And then when the doors open, you'll go into kind of a museum area. By that point, I should be joining you. I'll be in that museum area with you. And um, you can do, there's a little hands-on displays in there. And when the door opens for the movie, here's my suggestion, everybody. Sit in the last two rows, okay? I want you to sit in the last two rows because it's a panoramic view. And really, I think it's nicer, okay, if you're sitting in the last couple rows. The other thing, after the movie, the door is in the back open. You're actually going to be exiting from the back. All right. So you've held out your ticket, you've gone past the green screen, you're in the museum room, I'm with you there. Doors open, you're sitting in the back rows, enjoy the movie. After the movie, the doors open in the back, you get your sandals, if you want them. If you have water shoes on, no worries. If you have sandals on that can slip off, okay, um, get the sandals that have the strap on the back because there's a good chance you'll lose a sandal when that water rushes over, okay, if you don't have it firmly on your foot. And I'll give all the families your shoe bags. Take it in your hand, your shoe bag, and exit with it. As we get over to the elevators, I'll collect your shoe bags over there, okay, and I'll take it back to the bus. 
and uh, then I'm going to tell you when we're in line for the elevator over there, I will let you know at what time I expect that you'll be back up meeting me again at the arch. I'll be picking you up again at the arch. And as we go through, you know, I'll tell you one step at a time, all those things too. That's what kind of a lot to remember. We get ready to go on Cave of the Winds. Cave of the Winds. Excited? Here, here we go, everybody. We are going to vote if you could go on one attraction, the boat ride or the cave of the wind, only one attraction. Ready? Who would vote for the boat ride? Okay, hands down. Who would vote for the cave of the winds? This is how it always goes. Every single tour. I'm, I'm not kidding you. It's, it just leans toward the cave of the winds. That's what happens for whatever reason. I guess it is you and nature. Man, that really, people just love it. Okay, let's head off to Good Island. Get you back to your hotels. And sorry the tour ran a little longer than usual. Had those extra lines on the boat today. Very nice to come over to this area to see the lights. And if you go down to Terrapin Point, you can look back over your shoulder and you can see the lights on the American Falls as well. So that's why it's a nice viewing point from here. So we're going to start our little loop of drop-offs. I will go to the Holiday Inn, Comfort Inn, Sheraton, Wingate, and Fairfield. That will be the order of things. And listen for just a second. Now give me a second of your time here. I want everybody please to join me in saying, Happy Graduation, Vincent. Happy, Happy graduation. graduation. Good job. And yes. And remember now when I get home, I'm going to send you your uh, personalized thank you with your group picture that we took right there at the boat earlier and uh, a link to TripAdvisor. If you would please, please consider just writing a couple of lines. I save every single one. I do. And um, it, sh it lets my boss know I'm new at doing my job. And here's the real reason, okay? Are you ready? 
Larry and I have a fierce competition. Yes, guess who won having the most stars in May? Okay, guess who is tied in June? Me and Larry. Okay, guess who needs to win in July? Debbie. Okay, I have about six more and I'm going to clinch the deal. Okay, come on, you guys, come on, help me out. It's not like I want to make Larry feel bad. I just want to say, better luck next time, Larry. Yeah, that, that goes toward our, our holiday party, right? And we get a special prize, so I appreciate that. And before you go, I have a secret of my life I'm going to tell you. I'm a poet, and you didn't even know it. <laughs> yes. I have my special farewell poem for my guests. It goes like this. I am grateful for the grand memories we made together during your stay. I am grateful for any generosity and gratuities that might come my way, Venmo and PayPal accepted. But most of all, and I mean this from the bottom of my heart, I am so grateful to be your tour guide on this beautiful day. I hope one day to be the oldest living tour guide. I don't have that far to go. And you keep on coming out and having fun, okay, so we can go out and have fun together. Thanks for being with me, everybody. It's been a great joy to have you here. Whoa, whoa. Oh, thank you. Thanks. That means you're happy, and that makes me really, really happy.